Alright guys, today we have a video that's probably going to be pretty controversial as it was the last time I filmed a video like this. If you're watching this you already know why you're here. Uh, so just over a year ago my buddy bought an interesting car. A lot of people saw it, a lot of people hated it. Made some changes, fixed it. Now has put it back to being, should we just say broken to please the people on the internet? Yeah, that's so here's uh here's cody mason what's up dudes again i sort of fixed it i made a track car for a while but we're gonna take you through the whole like yeah. storyline of like this past year and the shit that's happened with this car which is pretty interesting and definitely controversial and i know that this the comment section is going to be filled with people just talking shit so let's begin when you bought the car what did it look like sort of like this a little bit lower gold big donk wheels Gangster wheels uh, had a bunch of pink wrap on it. The flares weren't painted. The deck lid wasn't painted. No interior. Uh, it was kind of a piece of shit. He's, I mean, yeah, it was definitely was like needed a lot of work. That's for sure. Now here's the exclusive. This is what everybody was questioning in the comments with the last video, which we can now obviously talk about. How much did you pay for this car? Yeah. So. <clears throat> on 13 it was gonna be a couple weeks before I could go get it because it was like early November last year but as time went on he was like dude come get this thing come get this thing like I need it out of my house like right now I've got bills to pay he said I'll give it to you for 10 grand and I said okay I'll see if, what I can do the next day he texted me and said I'll sell it to you for nine grand and I was like all right I'm coming up this weekend <laughs> how much does a bone stock FRS with 60,000 miles cost on it uh, probably in the, I mean, if you're really lucky, maybe 13, I'd say like 13 to 16, 13 to 15 for a bone stock, one with 60,000 miles. But here's the thing, okay? Now, you can argue that this thing was a piece of shit when he bought it, but for nine grand, he got a car with, let's just estimate those wheels were probably about $8,000 new, maybe slightly less than that. They're expensive wheels. How much did you sell all of the stuff on the car for? Uh, I think I got back like six after selling all the stuff, but like it's because all the stuff on it was quality parts It had no like eBay crap um, like Broadway static coilovers <clears throat> uh, Cusco control arms, you know, I guess that's really that was on all those on <laughs> but, but you know like actual quality parts and Like wheels where I sold the wheels for I think three grand and I wasn't like trying to make money I was just Trying to, uh, just trying to get rid of the parts. Trying to get rid of the parts change, change so, I, the right, so I could fund the, the change that I was doing to the car. It took a little longer than I expected to actually get the parts after I ordered them. Um, but as far as selling them, like, yeah, I made like, I think it was like 65 or 6,000 back after. after so, part. what you got essentially is a Rocket Bunny FRS for how much? Basically like 2,500, 3,000 $3, dollars. And like, that's how much the flares cost. So, I mean, 
a lot of people were like, oh, like, why would you pay? Why would you buy that? Like, yeah, why people, would you buy such a piece of shit? But like, they, what they don't understand is like, you know, it really didn't cost me much to own the car at that point. Now we should probably talk about the change. And this is something that a lot of people were excited for and also some people were pretty disappointed because this, yeah. this car's a very like love-hate thing. Everybody that is into super stancy stuff fucking loves this thing and everybody who is a function person hates this thing. And um, what did you do? So, <clears throat> sold all the parts off. Ended up getting new coilovers, uh, new wheels, new tires. Um, cut the cage, it had a, like a roll bar in it, a cage and stuff. Cut the cage out. Uh, got new exhaust, new new intake, um, sway bars. Basically made it a track car to compete in the series called Optimus Search for the Ultimate Street Car. And basically the whole premise is you wanna have a street car that you can also take on track, and uh, they have a final event that's in at SEMA every year called uh, the Optima Ultimate Streetcar Invitational. And usually it's like cars like Corvettes, fifth gen Camaros. I think there's a couple Evos, and then a bunch of like pro touring stuff. So older muscle cars that have been like resto modded. But um, yeah, so I basically made a track car to compete in that series. And the class I was competing in was four cylinder, naturally aspirated. Uh, two-wheel drive cars so FRS Miata S2000 um, because of the Rocket Bunny I was able to fit a 275 tire on it with a decent stance um, nice and wide which arguably could be I mean art for me I think it was worse I think it would have been better on like a 255 with stock body to be honest but hindsight's 2020 there yeah I mean it was, it was a fun track car so I really regretted making it a track car just because how slow the FRS's are it's like it has supposedly has a tune on it but it's like I would be very surprised if it made 170 horsepower probably unbelievable for most people you qualified for an event at SEMA you got an invitational only thing for SEMA in this car in yes, this car for a, for a <laughs> uh, like track oriented thing but I just couldn't quite keep up with the S2000s and luckily at the event I was at there was an S2000 that was running, but he has already qualified, or he had already qualified, so he wasn't uh, available to qualify twice, so it went to the second place guy, which was me. And for anybody that hadn't watched the video from last year, Cody has a racing background. You've raced yeah. in the Miata series. Yeah, so I have a Miata that, that I road race, and... And you've, you've done a bunch of, like, teaching stuff for uh, NCAA. Yeah, yeah, a bunch of, yeah, a bunch of instructing and stuff like that. And, uh, and from, from my perspective, yes, he's a pretty talented driver. Yeah, it's kind of difficult for people to understand why somebody like that would own something like this. And now I guess we should talk about why it isn't a track car anymore. The reason it's not a track car is because it was fun on track, but it was just too slow. Slower, It was slower than my Miata was. Uh, at every single track I took it to that I had also ran my Miata. So it's like, why own two cars that are almost identical speed? And the Miata's faster in the corners and way more fun to drive. So what is it about this that made you want to go back to doing a stancy setup i don't know stances is just like something else that unless you like have experienced it then you don't you don't it's, really it's, it's just like an expressive thing it's not there's no competition right it's there's, just like, there's no competition there's no like i'm lower than you or i have more camera than you like it's just about it uh it's crazy to drive because of how stiff it is and this is my daily right now i put about 500 miles a week on it um but it's like the attention the amount yeah, of looks the, it gets Admittedly, most of the looks are people who are completely confused as shit. If you have Cody on Facebook, you yeah. can see the... Actually, we'll add the clip right now. People look, oh, like, I wish my car got that much hate. I'm like, dude, you're doing it for the wrong reason if that's the case. Like, no one should ever build a car just to have it to like piss people off or, right like, like, it's just self-enjoyment like right you, it's just you like, enjoy driving have, this thing right. like this because it's wild like, yeah i mean i literally enjoy getting in the seat and driving around town just the, the way it drives the way it feels when you're driving it um like you know it's just it's you and it's it's just i don't know the attention it, it, it gets right, right. It, it's and, just a personal I mean, thing like people don't like this style right there's a lot of people that and i'm not gonna like, say like don't hate on it because that's useless because everybody will hate on it but stance guys usually like every style of car there is if you interviewed a hundred stance guys if you went to a car show and you interviewed a hundred stance guys and you said do you like or do you dislike any of these and you said like track guys drag guys 
donks, drift, yeah. uh, you know, low rider, anything. They'd be like, no, I think all those are dope. But if you asked any of those other categories how they feel about stance guys, they'd be like, oh, they're ruining the culture. They're ruining this, that, and the other. Being able to express yourself like this is just a whole different ball game. But I mean, if you can't, obviously, if you want to drive fast, then you need to go drive fast. But I mean, we build these cars to like have no intentions of driving fast or handling good or extending our tire life or anything like that. We like have the intention. We know the tires are going to last 5,000 miles. We know it's impractical. We know it's not hand going to handle as good as a stock car. We know it's it's not fast, but we just don't care about that with these cars. So. So I finished the conversion back from a track car a couple weeks ago and basically put Broadway coilovers back on it with 52K springs. I upped it just a little bit because for some reason they don't sell four inch 50K springs anymore. Uh, for all you like race car guys or anyone else, American people, it's uh, that's a 3,000 pound spring. So it's, it's a pretty like stiff spring. <laughs> Cusco lower control arms again and Racer X uppers, the Workmeisters. So that's my favorite touch is the work my series. I've always wanted a set of these wheels ever since like uh, 2011, 2010, 2011. And I was finally able to get my hands on a set that fit the car perfectly. So these wheels were originally on this car like, I don't know, two years ago. But yeah, I'm still working on the fitment. Don't hate on me. Uh, I literally just put it together like, I don't know, three weeks ago. I had to run a 275 tire in the front. And last time these were on the car, he was running a 265. So this step on the lip here, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but this step here, the bead for the, for the tire is literally right on this step. So this same design step is also the barrel. I'm not able to go as low in the front until I notch the frame. Um, so I'm gonna cut about an inch out of the frame and then uh, basically like refabricate the way the frame rail goes. You do uh, realize these all sound like really like scary terms to function people. Like, oh, I'm gonna cut some shit out of the frame. And basically, fucking... any production car and uh, SCCA for all you track people, but none of you are probably watching this that and have any idea what that means. There's tons of mods you can do and notching the frame and basically for tire clearance because they run massive tires. Um, it's like tubbing the fenders basically, but I'm not going to do like a full tub. It, it doesn't make any structural difference. Right. To the car. I'm going to cut it out about an inch out and then basically you just re weld in a piece of sheet metal in place of the new, it'll be like the new bottom of the frame rail, so it'll just be an inch shorter. Negative 14 in the front negative 17 18 in the back when i'm totally finished but hopefully hopefully i can get around to it next week because right now i'm driving at 500 miles a week and so. well, you're in school and this is your finals week right yeah yeah i had a final finally done. <laughs> yeah i graduate on saturday finally so so i put the interior back in it um uh, and cut the back cut the cage out of the back because i had this like pretty bad looking cage in it. The welds were pretty bad. I, Some people on the internet were like, oh, I've seen the cage, it's so terrible. And I was like trying to defend it at first. And then I was like, Whatever. It was a pretty it's, bad cage. Yeah. The welds that, okay, so the down tubes in the back, if you people know about cages, the down tubes in the back, they basically have to go to a frame rail or a, sho or a shock tower to be like legal for any sort of track day or anything. They went to like the, basically where the seat like clips in, the upper back of the seat, clips in they like were welded to the most flimsy thin sheet metal there <laughs> so the cage was so bad it wouldn't even pass a tech like so i just put a harness bar in there and then built a rear seat delete which turned out really well it has door cards which yeah, it did so not have before it has carpets insulation all, all yeah so my girlfriend was kind enough to purchase me the, the door cards the center console the carpet the all the dash trim and basically like all the everything in front of the back seat she that what i was missing she bought for me for christmas last year so that was super nice of her so i traded a guy the rear interior for the car for the roll cage that i cut out and i think he's driving around with it in his car still so since the interior was out and now it's back in and like for some reason i never got all the clips for anything it rattles so bad so i need to go through and put the rest of the clips in or just take the rear interior back out completely because that's what's rattling is, is the rear interior. I will say, if someone wants to trade, I have this Momo seat in the passenger seat. I've had it in my Miata for five years. If you want to trade me your passenger seat plus your factory passenger seat belt for that seat and a pair of harnesses, I got you. 
because I want that so Kenzie can can ride in here like pretty comfortably. Plus, I don't really want her having harnesses on on the street. I think the seatbelt would be way safer. All right, guys, if you actually made it to the end, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate most of the function guys probably left like 10 minutes ago. But uh, if you made it here, thank you for watching. Um, just to summarize, purpose of this video was really just to kind of summarize on the car and like see the progress from last year up until now. Um, but this video is not actually over. This is part one. Part two, we are going to discuss why this car gets so much hate. So make sure you tune in tomorrow to watch that video. Um, and if you guys haven't subscribed yet, please do. We're obviously going to be back doing some more stuff with this car in the future. And we will be continuing to follow the uh, progress of the car. But yeah, thanks guys for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.